Hello dear students, today we will be discussing about frequency measurement. We will be using the circuit Wayne's bridge for measurement of frequency. So this particular Wayne's bridge can be used to measure frequency in terms of unknown values of various bridge elements and uh, most of the elements will be known and we will have un uh, some values of bridge elements unknown and uh, we will be varying these um, bridge elements and we will be finding out the frequency now um, the frequencies can be um, measured in the range between 100 hertz and 100 kilohertz the accuracy of the bridge lies in the range of up to 0.5 percentage and uh, we'll be providing an AC input supply voltage and this input supply voltage may not be purely sinusoidal and so and they also will be having some harmonics and because of this reason uh, the frequency uh, the Wayne's bridge is frequency dependent that is once the frequency varies the entire balance of the bridge also will be affected so uh, what we do is that uh, a filter is connected in series with the null detector or the galvanometer in series with the detector so that uh, the frequency effects can be nullified so, so that is one of the uh, issues that occur in Wayne's bridge now we will look at uh, this in detail now this is the structure of a Wayne's bridge we have uh, capacitance and resistance arms so we have two arms which are purely resistive in nature which is a non-inductive resistance R3 as well as R4 and uh, here we have uh, arm AB as well as AD composed of uh, both capacitance as well as resistance these two uh, resistors R1 as well as R2 are mechanically coupled in the sense whenever you change the value of R1 automatically R2 also changes so that you, are, you can get R1 equal to R2 in such a manner so that is being achieved using some mechanical coupling now under the balance condition we will have V1 equal to V2 and V3 equal to V4 because uh, as we have already explained your terminal B as well as D will be at a common potential once your current I D equal to 0 so once it is equal to 0 uh, we can say that V1 will be equal to V2 and V3 will be equal to V4 ok so under this condition uh, so we have already explained how z1 z4 equal to z2 z3 so with that uh, result in mind we will be applying that result here or rather we will be applying the general equation for the uh, current and voltage we just applying kcl you can say that v1 will be equal to v2 so v1 will be equal to i1 into the equivalent impedance of this um, and here this will be equal to i2 into equivalent impedance and uh, similarly v3 will be equal to i1 r3 and v4 will be equal to i2 r2 now once you take the ratios and then cross multiply we will end up at this uh, this particular equation that is there okay and now what we do is that we will be equating the uh, we will be simplifying the equations and we will be equating the real part so what you can do is that uh, you can uh, expand these terms and simplify it and on equating the real part what you will get is that r4 by r3 equal to r2 by r1 plus c1 by c2 and uh, when you compare the imaginary part you will have R3 R2 omega squared C2 C1 R1 equal to R3 so here you can see that uh, a term which is corresponding to omega is uh, introduced into this equation so till, uh, till the bridges that we have uh, come across we didn't have the omega term so here we have the omega term and this omega term corresponds to the frequency once you substitute uh, omega is equal to 2 pi f you will get the uh, value of frequency that is there, the supply frequency so f is corresponding to 1 by 2 pi into root of r1 r2 c1 c2 
and if you can make r1 equal to r2 and c1 equal to c2 which is the case in most of the range uh, circuits you can get the equation as so you can get the equation as f is equal to n by 2 pi rc I think that is again explained or shown in one of the future slides. Okay, now we'll just take a few moments to explain. Face a diagram of this wind bridge. Now, uh, so face a diagram again is the relationship between current and voltage uh, which is there in this circuit. So we'll start with arm AD. So in arm AD we have uh, two, re two reactances that is uh, two impedances R2 as well as impedance corresponding to C2. So I2, if you take I2 as a reference, I2, here I2 is taken as a reference. So this is I2. So I2 is taken as a reference here. So I2 R2 will be in phase with I2. Now the impedance I2 into X X C2 or I2 divided by omega C2 will be lagging behind this I2 R2 by 90 degree. So that will be here. And the resultant of this so I2 R2 is the voltage. I2 into X2 is a voltage. So the resultant of these two will be giving you V2. Okay. So your V2 will be I2 R2 plus J I2 X C2 or I2 divided by J omega C2. So that will give you V2. So, so you will get the value of V2 here. So this is this is the value of V2 that you obtain, which is the resultant of I2 R2 and I2 JX2. Now um, your so this V2 will be corresponding to or equal to V1 in phase as well as magnitude. Okay, so V2 will be equivalent to V1 at balance condition in phase as well as, as, well as magnitude. So you can write V2 equal to V1 and you can say that uh, V1, uh, V1 will be, V1 is equivalent to I, I, IR into R1, IR is the current through this R1, so if I call this as IR, so this will be IR, IR will be in phase with V1 and this capacitive current, I am calling this as IC. This IC will be leading this IR by 90 degree. So this is IC. Okay. So here we have IR. So this is IR and IC will be leading IR by 90 degree. So resultant of IC and R, IR will give you I1. So that is not here. So this is I1. Okay, so the resultant of IC as well as IR gives you I1. So we have sold for uh, both bra both the branches AD as well as AB. Now we will we'll move on to the next two branches BC as well as um, CD. So here uh, the equation is V3 equal to V4. Now V3 corresponds to V3 corresponds to I1 R3 which is again equivalent to I2 R2. So V4 is equal to V3 equal to I1 R3 which is equal to I2 R2. Now uh, I2 R4. So I2 R4. Now I2 and I1 are in phase 
so i2 r2 will be also in phase and i2 r4 will be in phase and i1 r3 also will be in phase so that is being marked here this value so v3 equal to v4 equal to this value now the resultant of this v1 plus v3 the resultant of v1 v1 is already here resultant of v1 and v3 gives you the supply voltage so if you take if you have the triangle here so if you take v1 resultant of v3 as well as v1 so you will get the value of the supply voltage v so so you can take this as a supply voltage v so that's how you explain this particular phase diagram yeah in most of the bridges uh, most means bridge will be choosing the parameters in such a way that your r1 and r2 will be equal to r so again you are mechanically coupling r1 and r2 so that you can bring r1 and r2 to the same value and uh, you can also choose even in situ to be equivalent values so that you, uh, your equation will be simplified again uh, one thing that you have to remember is that it is a frequency sensitive bridge so with the variation of supply frequency uh, trying to measure the frequency this supply frequency varies again the balance of the bridge also may get affected so again as we have already told we will be using some filters uh, to um, reduce the effects of frequency at the detector side so thank you so thank you so much for come to end of this particular lecture